Uh, right, okay, so we've got a calculation coming up. Um, for our chain alcohol um, has a maximum C5H12O. Got a nice experiment there. Student found combustion of 1.54 grams of the alcohol changed the temperature. Calculate the amount in mole of alcohol J that burns um, and then calculate the entropy change of combustion. So first of all, moles of alcohol, let's do that. Um, I've got 1.54 grams of alcohol. If you add up the molar mass, you come to 88 and that comes to 0 0.0175 moles. Okay, then you want to calculate the entropy change. So the energy produced oops, is going to equal my mass of water, which is 180, times that by uh, my specific heat capacity, which they told me is one, uh, 4.18, times by my temperature change, which is 52.5 degrees C and that comes to 39.501 joules which is 39.501 kilojoules. To calculate delta H it's going to be that number 39.501 divided by the moles of alcohol, because this gives me in kilojoules per mole, um, which is that number there. Okay, and that then gives me, it has been, and I'm gonna put the minus in now, minus 2257.2 kilojoules per mole. They want the answer to three significant figures, so it's minus two, to 60 kilojoules per mole. Um, the minus sign, of course, is there to show it's an exothermic reaction. The temperature went up during the reaction, which is why I had to put the minus sign in there. The question then goes on to say the calculated value for that is different. Apart from heat loss, suggests so two reasons for that difference. Well, you could have incomplete combustion happening. Um, you don't know that you've had complete combustion, so incomplete combustion. Non-standard conditions um, could have been used as well. Um, the alcohol could have evaporated um, rather than being burned. Um, and also, we haven't taken into account the specific heat capacity of the beaker that held the water as well. And obviously the beaker was heated as well as the water. Uh, okay, so, um, Write the equation including state symbols for the chemical change that represents the standard entropy change formation of the alcohol and it's told me it's a liquid alcohol. So you've got to get to one mole of C5H12O and we know it's a liquid so I need to put that in. So in order to do that I needed to start off with five carbons as a solid. 6H2 as the standard state and also a half O2 in the gaseous state as well. Remember, if it wants a formation, it's only got to be one mole of that. You can't make any more. Um, so you've got to get these numbers to balance making one mole of that, not forgetting your state symbols. <coughs> okay, head cycle time. So it's given me formation data. So if I've got formation data, I've got to find this. I've got to find delta HC for the C5 alcohol. So that's what I want to find, and I've been given formation data. So down here must go my elements. So five carbons plus six H2 plus a half O2 down there and my arrows go up because the data relates to taking my elements and making these up here. So C5H12O is minus 366. Carbon dioxide is minus 394. So five times minus 394. I've got six waters as well. So six times minus 286. If I add all those together, it comes to minus 3686. Okay, 
Now, different people do this different ways. The way I do it is I draw a circle and I put clockwise arrows going around the circle. Hopefully you can see that this arrow and this arrow go clockwise. That arrow is going against this arrow here. So think of it as a clock face going round and round and round. These go the right way, that's going the opposite way. So minus 366 plus delta HC is equal to the arrow that goes the other way, 3686. You rearrange that equation and delta HC equals minus 3320 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so here we go. Uh, branch chain alcohol J. So it's a branch chain alcohol J was heated under reflux with excess potassium dichromate and sulfuric acid to form an organic compound K with the infrared spectrum below. Um, determine the structures of the branch chain alcohol J and the compound K, given reasoning, and then write an equation. So let's have a look. This here is obviously C double bond O. That's quite straightforward. Have I got, what's my problem? If I'm, I'm oxidizing an alcohol, what are my possibilities? It could become an aldehyde or ketone. As it's under reflux, if it was going to be an aldehyde, it would have gone straight to the carboxylic acid. So I've got two options, ketone or I've got a carboxylic acid. Is it a carboxylic acid? No, it can't be. This is not an OH. If it was OH from a carboxylic acid, it would be very broad. This is CH. Those are CH bonds there. So what have I got? I've got a ketone, haven't I? Um, so first mark, heating under reflux has produced a ketone because there's no OH from an acid. And that would have occurred between 2,500 and 3,000. Um, 300. There is only um, a C double bond O for a ketone at 1720. Therefore, I must have started with a secondary alcohol. A primary alcohol would have gone to a carboxylic acid. A tertiary alcohol would not have been oxidized, so I must have started with a secondary alcohol. I have got five carbons. One, two, three. It's branched, so I can't put my, I can't, I've got three in a row like that, it's branched. I can't put my next carbon there because that would make it tertiary, therefore um, I've got to have it on the end. So I've got four and then five carbons there. So there we go. That has got to be my alcohol, like so. So I've got four carbons in a row, one branch, and my alcohol must be coming off the other carbon to give me a secondary alcohol. Um, and therefore the ketone that I make is going to be this boy here. Um, CH, CH3, and then I've got two of those there. Okay, and then finally they want the equation. So I've got CH3, uh, CHOH, and then CH3 twice. I'm making a ketone. So, whoops, sorry, that's a very dodgy square bracket. So that square bracket O to represent an oxidizing agent to give me CH3, CO, CH, CH3, twice, plus your water as well that you make. Right, so <coughs> alcohol J is soluble. Explain why it's soluble in water um, using a label diagram. That's your alcohol there. Um, obviously, you can hydrogen bond this boy um, as so to a water molecule. Don't forget your dipoles, like so, um, just to make it very clear. So that there is your hydrogen bond. So that's why it's soluble, um, because it can hydrogen.
I want to win water.